all English speakers here, and it's still an issue for right. these Chinese Korean teams where it's like, look, you have to use broken English to to call targets. Like yeah. I've heard, uh, like the mic checks on these teams where they're you know saying go back, go back, go back, and it's like you have to make sure you actually okay, that's an easy phrase, but like but how hard them, is it to communicate yeah. for LGD and. As we saw at Worlds, that got pretty difficult for them. Yeah, just well, communicating as we get into pick and bans, like broken English. Uh, it, it is simple. <laughs> I, I mean, I played in a team when yeah. it was like broken English. It is very simple, but a lot of the nuances get lost. And as you really, right. wanna, not, not necessarily in game, but as you want to review the games, you really go over and see what people meant and mm. how they wanted to play out. Those nuances are very hard to like translate sometimes. But okay. enough about talking about that. Yeah, I we're think already we're in, in game. the pick some bans. And as you guys mentioned, Leeson and Kindred just. Getting knocked out right away. No yep. one wants to deal with that. I'm really surprised that they banned Lulu on blue side. That seems really weird to me. She's like probably the top priority pick that you could possibly yeah. have. And I think they're setting up for a specific first pick. Maybe like Gangplank, Gangplank is up, right? Like um, there's also Elise who's really big as well. The Kench is still could, available. Yeah, and Tom Kench. So okay. There's like around like I think five like, sort of S tier champions, depending right. how far down you want to go. Like 90% pick ban champions. So it's like paring down those properly. And and of course it's you know does TSM actually even know what LGD wants to play at this point? I think it'll be a game plan here. He did get nerfed on this patch. He doesn't re refund the mana when he kills stuff with his parley, and he also yeah. has lower base stats. So, but he's still pretty crazy. He's still yeah, he's still pretty ridiculous. I mean, yeah, that was never the biggest problem. <laughs> playing, right? It was just how much he turns up at towards the end of the game. So we'll see. Elise was the one that LG decided they wanted to weaken out a little bit. You're on the wrong patch. What are you doing? <laughs> this he's is, like, hey, this, this is popular, four. right? Is it popular right now? <laughs> the Sage. Uh, tribute to the. Of course, yeah. a big throwback to Sir Dyrus. I think a Rek'Sai maybe. I think that could be a good pick here as well. The only things that are up right now are Gragas and Rek'Sai for top party jungles. So yeah, I true. mean, uh, yeah. Who do you? But you just trade them. Missile. Like, does it even matter at that point? Oh, why okay. do you? Why do you leave up Tom Kench still then? I feel like it's decent. Ah, yeah, yeah. Support, right? ah there okay. we go. I mean, th there's almost no counterplay. All the the ways to beat the Tom Kench in lane is like it's a two phase type of thing where you trade the cooldown of either your hook or your bind against Devour, and then you need to hit priority target again in that five or six six, six second window where. The devour is down, otherwise you're just gonna get nullified anyway. So right. like it's so much pressure on the lane and he can really really break open a game. And it's a team with double lift on it, guys. TSM has already adapted to the new AD carry. They've got a giant protector support here, so they're <laughs> already set up for the play style. LGD steals away Devil's favorite champion of Tristana. And the Rexai does come through, of course. It still means there's easy jungle pickups. Uh for what it's worth, this does have the Dr. Mundo changes where he has like that bonus on hit damage on his E. Still haven't seen him played yet in competitive after that, but right on. We're seeing the hover. I mean, you you know, you mentioned, it, do they still go for kind of the protected double? It'll be interesting to see because that says a lot about just what kind of player he is. Even if he leaves the team and goes to a new team himself, if you end up having to build around that, I is mean, that just where he's you stopped? got double lift. Like, Bjerg's a good play multiple styles. No, like, you, you know, you get it. You get an all-star point guard. You don't not pass him the ball anymore. So fair enough. Fair I, enough. I, I I do think like proper TSM. Can can run any different kinds of compositions like double if plays Ash. He will play Silver if you tell him to do this. But yeah. uh, I think this is fine just to start up and be like, yeah, we're gonna pick double lift. Deal double with lift it. on Jinx. Right. I've never seen that. Yeah, weird. <laughs> oh, this is shocking. TSM were were doubting whether they like lock in their jungler or go for like a gangplank flex right uh, flex right here. But they do actually go for a tank jungler because if you go nearly Jinx, it's really nice if you get that in a controlled environment. We get the attack speed boost and you can siege. But you you kind of lack the peel here. Right. So I, I do like if they're if they're going for a double like carry setup both out of Bjergsen and double lift. That you just put your jungler on on a peeling position. You don't need the third carry there. Yeah, they have true. amazing disengage already. They have the Gragas and the Tom Kench, and pretty good initiation and follow up as well. So, it just they really have to pick something that's going to go against that Fiora. Maybe I hope he plays Riven, or actually, I mean, there's a couple different picks like Renekton you can pick as well. But yep. I want to see something that can actually pressure the Fiora. I don't want to see something that just goes even. I think that's the wrong way to deal with it. I want to see something okay. crushing that lane. But it is. So it is flame. Does that change how you want to? Do you now maybe want to go even, or is it still like? Do you still got to go, go all hard, in? man? Go no hard. <laughs> I mean, he's all playing. Right. He's playing with the same stats as you, right? Just because his flame doesn't make this champion stronger. If you two of you want him and get him, he, he will die unless he like outplays it. you. Exactly. That's that's the way to. Well, that's think the about problem, it. though. If he outplays you, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that can easily happen. Yeah. It it could. Especially on champion like Fjord, that's true. Yeah. Oh, Zillion actually got changed on this patch as well. He has the yep. time in the bottle, which is some some games I'm like, yeah, I got a lot out of it. I, I got like a whole level here. But then other <laughs> other times like I got 100 XP. Like what is that? <laughs> what does that even do? Yeah. But I think he's pretty cool if you can actually hit the bombs really well. The, if you hit the double stun in lane, it's he's, disgusting. He's actually really like I've, there's a, some players in Europe that offer only Zillion, so they'll play in mid or top lane. And if you get him down, if you if you fall behind with Zillion, you're done. But if you get slightly ahead, the way you play him is. 
you have a really good base kit. So the way you use that is you get a lot of mana, so you get uh, Archangel Staff, and then you get a lot of CDR. You just want to cast the good spells as many as it, many times as you can, as quick as you can, and then double bomb into double bomb, double bomb Ooh. is actually really interesting. But yeah, it's not been picked. I like the Renekton pick. I feel like in compression. Yeah, you mentioned it really earlier. Hard. And then the Nivea being locked in. For I mean, it's more kiting, right? Like. Yeah. Yerkson was playing so this at one. the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. Like, Yerkson was already playing this one at, at Worlds, I believe. Uh, I mean, or at least he learned it from the other European mid laners who are all bringing that one yeah. out. And yeah, it's a really good kite back, very long range team. I like it because I was about, like, I want to get that Kassadin point in before they pick Kassadin. Like, generally, uh, when you yeah. see Anivia, it's like, okay, we'll pick Kassadin. But the lineup from LGD right now is so weak in terms of wave clear. Like, individually, those matches might be good, but as a unit, if LGD falls behind, and if you look at what TSM can bring, like, they have the early game boost from the Renekton, they have a Jinx that arguably well in the entire game. Sure. If they get a slight lead, they can just start sieging. There's no wave clear whatsoever on LGD, and the LGD will then be forced to play a very predictable league, and Anivia punishes that super hard. Wall one side, ulti the other, kite them off, and just kill them off. So I mean, it's starting to sound like really LGD at this point. They're relying more on the fact that they have flame, and you know they've been together yeah. for a while, so they can kind of rely a little bit more on the individual talent, whereas TSM's like, all right, we got double lifts, let's test it out. Let's see if this really works out. CLG never really pulled it off, but maybe we can do a little bit better one-up on protecting that man on the AD carry. Ladies and gentlemen, the debut of the new TSM going up against LGD, who has a little bit to prove here in the very first match, and bringing us the very first game here in San Jose. It will be Demon, Monte Cristo, and Sifa. Thank you very much, and hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's great to be back casting League of Legends alongside these experts. You know, I, I'm a bit of a noob, so they've gave me two <laughs> absolute <laughs> legends in this one. And basically, we've just discovered that TSM have become CLG. Protect the double lift yes. is in full yeah. <laughs> It definitely is. I mean, we take a look at this composition right here. It is a lot of zone control and protection for the Jinx. So it's a bit of a surprise uh, to see this kind of new look on TSM, but we'll see how it works for them. Definitely. And the big question for me is, we didn't see Ryze or Gangplank picked up here, which were huge polarizing picks in the Kespa Cup. So what strategy are we going to seek with this Anivia coming out in the mid lane, and how is it going to play in the early to mid game while Doublelift is kind of waiting to scale up on that Jinx? Yeah, I mean, you've cast an entire tournament on this patch, <laughs> so you know you are literally the expert. And we were so surprised. You were, we, as soon as it started, we were like, Ryze is open, Gangplank's open. Oh my god, someone's got to take it. But nobody did. Nobody yeah. looked towards it. And we it was, were so surprised. We were like, first rotation, okay, they're going to go to second rotation. Didn't happen. I mean, it's it's a refreshing change of pace for the patch, and I'm wondering what these teams have identified in their scrims that makes Anivia a more popular pick. Kasten, of course, did show up. Peke did that. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Forcing it out, boys. You gotta play. You gotta play the Kasten. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Game number one in this best of three. It is not Origin versus Fnatic. Ignore the top. It is TSM versus LGD. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the new look TSM. In case you're wondering who is playing, it is Haunter in the top lane on that Renekton for TSM. Sven Skeren has moved across the ocean into the jungle on Gragas. Bjergsen now on Anivia, taking tips off Peke maybe from the Origin team. Double lift on Jinx. And of course, Kasing is on the time catch. Meanwhile, for LGD, it is going to be Flame in the top lane. We weren't sure whether it's going to be Acorn or Flame. It is Flame today on Fiora, keeping some of that world patch alive. And of course, TBQ coming in. We weren't sure if he was going to play because there was a bit of an illness uh, report for him and PYL. So they're going to be carrying on. He's, of course, going to be in the jungle. Pain Evil. Yes, it is Pain Evil. It's not God V anymore. It's or Pain Wayless. Evil. He's a man oh. of many names. <laughs> yes. <laughs> on, uh, on, on, in the mid lane on Cassidy. And, of course, Imp, the legend that is. Now, are we going to see the Imp smile, I wonder, after this game? We'll find out. He's going to be on Tristan and PYL, of course, on Alastone. Well, Bit of lane swapping coming out here immediately from LGD. And we were talking about how, how we expected this game to go. Are we going to expect China Chinese team LGD to just go straight at it and just pile straight in, go for the lane swap and get those towers down? Well, it's important to take a look at how LGD started winning at the particular World Championship because they did pick things up in their second round Robin, including a win over TSM, the, which doesn't really matter because it's basically an entirely new roster. But in this particular instance, how did they win? They won with skirmishing. And sure, they have very low wave clear right here, but they have an excellent composition at diving. Alistair with the ultimate, easily able to get under turrets. Fiora with her ultimate, able to heal up under turrets. We have high mobility with Cassidy, uh, with Rek'Sai to come in and actually dive tower. So LGD going to take the lane swap, and then they're going to be looking for dives. Well, and the big thing too to point out is that TBQ and Flame have much better synergy than Acorn and uh, TBQ do overall. So we may see a lot more attention paid to this Fiora in the early game. And when we see, we've seen on the world stage how quickly this character can snowball up and control a little bit mitigated, obviously, as she saw some some tuning on the more recent patches, but still an absolute terror if she can get ahead. Well, we 
can see Blue Buff being picked up there. So we'll see whether this lane swap pays off, who it works out best for. As it is, Bjergsen on Anivia, not a champion we're attuned to seeing him on. See how he's going to handle this one. No doubt about what TSM are doing. It's just going to be slow and steady gameplay. Nothing too bursty in this one, which I don't know. I don't, I don't know whether that's going to work out for them. I mean, with LGD, they've got a lot of burst damage in there. This, this is this is risky start from TSM in this tournament. Remember, they got knocked out 2-0 by Unicorns of Love in this very location last year. That's going to be still in the mind of Bjergsen, I feel. Yeah, this is actually a really interesting lane swap that's happening. So we actually, since Kasing showed in the top side, we see how Flame immediately TP bottom side just to go ahead and pick up that rather large minion wave. So TSM playing very defensively and actually starting to, trying to stop the fast pushing. Meanwhile, Doublelift now going top. So while we, at Worlds, we generally saw a lot more of these 3-1 with the jungler on the, the same side of the map as the three and then the fast push of the tower. This is an adjustment that, that TSM is making right here. Oh, okay. oh hello. Kasing's going to try and throw Imp in that. Doublelift not quite. Catching up in time that could have maybe gone a bit aggressive, but it's going to force him back. It was a really big misplay from Imp, actually, because Jinx had already left the bottom side, which is why we saw the TP from Flame down in bottom. So you should know at that point that there's a possibility of the Jinx being there. So letting the Tom Kench get stacked up and eat you win the traps. <laughs> it's a very powerful combination of champions for continuous CC. So a little bit sloppy from LGD. Definitely not what we want to see, too, especially for a team that has had such inconsistent performances in the past. I mean, I think both you and I coming into Worlds were like, this is the team that's going to win, and then instant turnaround once we saw oh, them. Oh, no, no, no. Stage. I said SK ah. Telecom was going to win. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> China's going to win, Boat. I was never there. I never will be there. <laughs> At least you thought they were good, though. Give me a little bit of credit oh, yes, here. They were, I did think they were quite good. But this time, you kind of are in the China's going to win, Boat. We'll see. We'll see how it works out. Flame's going to get stunned up. Does flash out. The belly comes in, Svenskeren catches on towards him. Hots the quite, quite get it. It's Svenskeren, the flash is in. Double flash, gets him the kill, but how costly will that be? They're going to try and turn it around towards TVQ. Bjergsen with a great wall, catching him out, but that will be enough. He'll get away from that one, will get stunned up, but first blood goes to TSM. Clutch yeah. tunnel right there, for sure, coming back. And with that play, uh, it was actually a misplay by Flame. Now, the Fjord Renekton is a high-skill matchup because you have to parry that Renekton stun, and he didn't actually post that particular ability, which ended up getting him caught out. But nice play by TSM. And oh. Hauntzer coming in. Oh, and hello, because Singh's managed to chomp up PyYL at. Managed to get caught out, but not going to be much damage to follow through. He's going to get stunned out once again. Doublelift could go for this, but he's choosing not to be aggressive and instead respects him. A little bit too respectful, possibly, there, because Singh wanted that. You have to think this lane can just be so explosive, though, if one of these AD carries gets an advantage. And Double Lift has it currently, does not want to risk throwing it away in this first game. New roster, they've defaulted to this Protect the Double Lift comp, and they're clearly playing very safe around it. Yeah, you just need that scaling on the Jinx, and everything else will click into place. TSM, they want this game to go long. They want to scale up with the Anivia, uh, with the Jinx, and just play a very defensive style. They can turtle pretty much forever with this composition with their amount of wave clear. So a big win in the early game, like that first blood, is great for them as they're just going to be waiting anyway. Well, it's great to see the, the hookup, really, more between a, a brand new top laner, a brand new jungler, and obviously the experienced Bjergs, and once say experienced, Svenskeren is very experienced in their haunts are effectively almost the rookie coming into this one. Doublelift should be safe here, be able to clear that wave out, not too worried about the coverage, because Singh getting the ward coverage down, that's a partnership I'm really interested to see where it work out here, because Singh, I really like the guy, I've known him for a good two years now, obviously Doublelift we've known for years and years throughout this sport, I'm really interested to see how these hook up, and more, more importantly, after he was backstage watching this game, it's a little awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really curious to see where this Kassin is going to go now that he's level 6. If Pain Evil, formerly God V, of course, uh, can get enough wave clear down to potentially roam, or if Bjergsen's just going to keep shoving him in. Because right now, I mean, he's running Bjergsen out of mana, but what is it really going to mean at this stage in the game? Oh, Pain Evil not quite catching properly on towards Bjergsen there, but Bjergsen out of mana, needs that blue buff. Has only got that tier stacked up. Can't see the stacks on it. It is covered over, so uh, you guys have a beautiful camera, so we'll see how he's working on that one. He's assuming to be stacking it pretty well so far, but uh, can't, it, it, when, you, when six, you're pointing 60, it, I can't see it, man. Yeah. 60 right now, <laughs> we just got it, so not too many stacks quite it's yet. It's just got it, yeah.
But even though, I mean, this first blood has actually been huge in this bottom side because, again, the Renekton Fiora matchup definitely around skill, and the fact that uh, Hauntzer was able to get that fast pickaxe is a major buy. So Flame's going to have to really hold off on being aggressive for the time being, and that's not what they want. They need to be able to make these dives uh, once they hit six and try and make some plays on the map because otherwise they're just going to get pushed in with their lack of wave clear. Yeah, and so far, PYL really not being too active on the map, hasn't really found any opportunities to get in or find greater advantages. Of course, an excellent tunnel earlier on in the game, but not getting too much more. And with PYL approaching six, approaching that unbreakable will, I expect we might see a lot more aggression from LGD once they're comfortable diving those towers. Pain Evil getting a little aggressive on Bjergsen there, has got his egg still to fall back on. So he's not too worried about that one. Will be gifted the blue buff as well. So expect to see him sticking around a little bit longer. Ping on towards TBQ there. So they've got the jungle path covered off there. They're pretty much sure where he is. Are they going to try and make something of this? Because the lane swaps have happened. You can see the AD carriers moving towards the bottom half of the map. Both of them fairly even still in terms of CS. Yeah, it looks like we do see Double lift and Kasing really backing off that turret right now. Here's the wave going to hit, but no one actually taking a tower quite yet, despite the lane swap. And Imp and PYL playing very aggressively. They've been playing on this turret the entire time. Part of that is Tristana's natural propensity for pushing the lane, but they've been clearing very actively and trying to get those explosive charges down to deal a little bit of damage and start chipping the towers. And of course, they've had the freedom to do that because of the excellent warding coming out to spot out Svenskaren consistently. They know when they're free to apply that pressure. They know when they can get aggressive on that bottom lane. And it hasn't gotten them too much yet, but if they can find an early tower here, it could be a huge boon for LGD. Oh, it looks like there's going to be a possible setup in the top lane. Kasing's going to pull double lift to safety. Hornsa is going to be able to back away from this one. So TBQ trying something, but while well spotted out by that pink ward, did go back to clear it out, though. Yeah, interesting. I wonder if he even saw it. A little bit difficult to tell. He's not going to circle back around, just right back into his own jungle. So that's going to get some good value out of that ward right now. Bjergsen just had a really nice recall timing, actually. He backed off to pick up his catalyst and regen his health right before the two TPs came up from, or uh, the TPs came up his own and uh, Pain Evils, God V, Wayless, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> A man of many faces. Hey, look, TBQ found the ward. Oh, but he's going to get protected. Sven Skerin's coming in as well. They could try and catch on to this one, but he will flash away. So TBQ getting himself to safety, but flash down now for that jungler. And TSM with these small advantages, once again, can just continue to back off here. As we see a little bit of aggression on the bottom side. But they, there's no pressure on them to make any moves in this early game. They have Anivia with double scaling items in the mid lane, looking for that Rod of Ages. See the stacks coming out there as well. And there's just there's no no reason for them to get aggressive. Here's some aggression on towards Pain Evil. Sven Skaren wants to fancy this one, but he's in a little bit of trouble. Has to use the ultimate. Here comes the teleport. Flame's gonna join the party. The wall will be cut from Bjergs and TBQ just has to sidestep it. The rocket even landed actually on towards Pain Evil. Slide in. Haunts are coming across. He wants a chunk on Flame. He's going straight for the 1v1, just slides away. And Flame takes half his health damage. Really sloppy skirmish right there from both sides. A lot of skill uh, shots missed in that little engagement, but uh, TSM comes out the better for it. They actually get Flames TP. Now they have TP advantage. And LGD, they need these TPs to make these dives because they want to make the aggressive plays to start snowballing and trying to split push in this game. Ideally for LGD, this, this game ends with Tristana wave clearing in the mid lane and Cassidy and Fiora just taking over the side lanes. Oof. But, Ooh, Big damage for damage. Double F. Is he going to try and go for this one? He's getting covered off by PYL. But look at this coming down the bottom. Sven Skeren and Bjergsen, they're going to try and cut them off. Where's Imp going to run to here? He's got to get away now because they're coming around the corner already. Teleports, is it going to be enough? They're going to try and get around the side there. He's going to jump away. Imp will get to safety, it seems. And well, TSM are going to continue chasing. PYL looks like he's going to be the sacrificial lamb on the tower. He'll be the man to go down. This has to happen eventually. Who will get the kill? Oh. He's going to get out alive! Well, they're going to try to turn this one around. Double if will back away, but that's a mistake from TSM. They should have picked at least one kill up there. I mean, excellently played by LGD, bringing in the Rek'Sai on the backside and using the Unbreakable Will, making sure that he was not that sacrificial lamb. And in, in the meantime, Flame is farming up on the top line, or uh, top lane, recouping a lot of the loss that he suffered earlier on in the game. So, And he's probably going to take that tower too. Actually, a poor choice to use the, uh, well, it's getting low, maybe not take it up this way, <laughs> but a really poor choice to use that teleport right there. Bjergsen taking a little bit of damage, but he will get slowed up by Kasing. Double lift hit by the Prey Seeker, but not in any mortal danger. But they've got, a, LGD has a lot of pressure on the lanes right now. Now. And meanwhile, in the mid lane, there's Tristana. Yeah, Imp keeps on pushing, and this is really working out well. TSM's really failed attack there. 
being countered very well. Teleport still available for Bjergsen if he wants to go for it, but PYL now taking advantage of getting all the ward coverage down in TSM's jungle. Wow, the TSM lost so much as a result of that action. They really didn't even need to do that. Again, they can just sit there and wave clear and scale. They don't have to be the ones making the aggressive plays right now. And when you misplay the dive like that, you're going to be punished. Look at the vision they got. Red buff gone. Tons of turret damage down. And if they can take one here, it's going to be absolutely huge. So I, I, it's a big advantage to LGD. They've actually managed to even up the gold because they were farming in more lanes at the same time. I, I think that was just a, some pretty poor coordination from TSM. Yeah, just a lack of patience, really working against them in that exchange. And, and overall, LGD, we've seen them fail trying to make proactive plays. We've now seen TSM kind of drop the ball making proactive plays. But when LGD are forced onto that back foot, their experience really shows through. They know how to avoid that tower dive, and they know how to recoup. They know how to take these smaller advantages, whether it's wave control, whether it's a little bit of damage on the top side of the map. And they're clearly showing us that they're the more experienced roster, at least at this stage. Yeah, I mean, that is that is the key of it, really, is TSM. This is a new team, so don't expect that team coordination to be crazy. but. You know, these are experienced players. Everybody on this team has played a lot of League of Legends over the years and a lot of professional matches. So at the moment, not just quite gelling, as you would expect from a new team. Bjergsen picking himself up the blue buff, back to middle and continuing on the farming path. A double lift. Had an opportunity earlier to try and get that kill on him. But of course, remember, his ulti was down. He'd used it in the mid lane. That would have got so much, so much value if it had just held on for that one moment. Let's talk about this tunnel that's right here. This mm -hmm. tunnel has actually been really co critical to how they've played this game. First off, they got out of uh, one gank using that tunnel by to bypass the wall uh, with TBQ. And then the second time, it provided the spot for uh, him to ult on and kind of turn that dive around. And the reason why they've been able to keep it up is because of the Tristana. They've been constantly pushing this lane, so this tunnel's basically impossible to, stro to destroy. And that's been a really, really big factor that has saved LGD's bacon on a couple of occasions right now. Well, and you can see the focus on wave pressure by the way that Tristana is building. She's not going for that early IE. She's getting those boots too early on in the flat AD as opposed to the crit. She wants to force out waves. She wants to force down the towers. And LGD are, are kind of playing as we saw them play when they were at their prime and really taking advantage of this patch as we've seen it sort of be the fast push sort of patch all about those early towers. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, we talked about this a lot at the World Championship, but the LGD we thought was going to be coming in is the one that has great wave manipulation that really uh, plays around the minion waves particularly well. Now, that LGD did not show up at the World Championship, and it's definitely looking a lot better here in San Jose. They, they appeared in, like, the last game, maybe two games, <laughs> yeah. and then there's that gear yeah, piece, we're done. And then everyone realized, oh, actually, they were a good team, and they did manage to finish top in China for a good reason. And now, maybe, we're going to see that aggression through. But there's a lot of rumors going around, and there's a lot of illness, possibly, in the LGD camp, so we'll see how that translates into this matchup. It is a best of three if you've just joined us. This is the quarterfinals, and of course, Unicorns of Love await in the semi-final. Uh, not Unicorns of Love, um, Origin. Origin, or Orihen, if you uh, want to go full Spaniard. <laughs> full yeah. Orihen. Orihen. <laughs> Orihen. You've got to get all aggressive on there. Hello, Pain Evil's going aggressive. Sven Skerin's going to join him, but Pain Evil feeling very aggressive. God V for those that just joined us, or Gold V as a lot of you guys called him throughout Worlds. But, uh, I think that's why he changed Maybe his that's name. why, yeah. <laughs> No more jokes at his expense. That's all right. We'll find new ways to meme him. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. <laughs> but this is setting up really good right now for LGD. They are in a good position. They're pushing the bottom. They're pushing the mid lane. You know, TSM are being forced back. And I was about to say, this is setting up nicely for the Dragon. And TBQ starts it off. And this is really what TSM are sacrificing by looking for so much scaling in the early game with the Catalyst, with the Tier, with, uh, you know, the Avarice Blade even coming out on the Jinx, is that they're going to have to give up some of these early objectives to a lot stronger uh, members on the opposite side, at least the Cassidy in the mid lane. I mean, it does expose that top lane. Obviously, that's the, the counter to the fact they went for that Dragon Flames, having to be very cautious here. Svenskone is nearby. This is the counter play that we have seen changes to in 5.22. We'll see how that transmits, but at the moment, here in 5.21, the patch we're playing on, and looking like that top lane should go down first tower of the game to TSM. That's some really nice, actually, uh, play by Hanser right there, because he, everybody had gone back. Uh, Bjergsen had just recalled, so he had TP up. So he knew that he had the pressure to go ahead and push down this tower. It's Venskrin, good positioning in the enemy jungle, so they have to give it up for free. A nice tower take there by TSM. Doublelift took a bit of punishment in that mid lane, but Payneva is the one that's going to have to back away. Now with Doublelift and Bjergsen there, that middle tower might start getting a little bit of pressure. Sven Skirin's nearby. Monster's going to back himself off, but instead they're going to choose to just farm it out a little bit. 
and steal Sven Skjern's jungle. Well, I mean, Sven, you are in double lifts team. This is going to happen to you a lot. The Raptors are no longer yours. I'm sorry. Oh, it's going to be interesting to see. My big question coming into this next stage of the game is where are we going to see the pressure shift next? LGD have, obviously, the raw damage necessary to take down a tower, but how are you going to push a wave against an Anivia in this mid lane? What can you really do to get an advantage? She may not be huge in team fights yet, but her wave clear is absolutely insane at this stage of the game. Yeah, and controlling the blue buff has to be a priority now for this LGD team. They have a lot of ways to get over and around walls with the Cassidy and with the Rek'Sai, so they can kind of sneak in there with relatively low risk. And here we see TBQ looking to get that red buff once again. Tried a little snipe, but it's not going to work out for him. Meanwhile, in the middle, Bjergsen caught out. He's going to get egged, but can he get away from this one? Him taking a hell of a lot of damage. Horsa gets in and just massacres the entire LGD team. He's keeping them long enough. And now TBQ's got in there. Double it, putting the damage down. He'll get dropped. It's a double for Horsa. He's on a roll. He's got all three kills. Huge team fight positioning misplay from LGD. Hauntzer gets into the back line and he does a beautiful job. But you have to respect an ulting Renekton this early in the game, especially with one that has a Tiamat or a Hydra here. And that's going, I mean, that's an immense amount of damage. And they're going to get two towers off of this great play by TSM. And just amazing, amazing performance there by Kassing on the back half of that uh, fight to save Bjergsen, to come in with that note button, to make sure that he could rebirth right in the middle of the team, to bring in the wall, and overall just much better coordination from TSM. And this is kind of sad to see LGD coming from a region known for team fighting, known to be proficient team fighters and skirmishers, and just really dropping the ball in that exchange. Uh, losing another turret there, too, just to a minion wave. So three turrets in a row. We're going to take a look at that replay. Of course, really interesting. Flashes in, gets the pulverize, knocks Bjergsen back. And this is an excellent start for them overall, but you're going to see the overcommitment here because they do not respect Haunter. They think they can kill Bjergsen. There's a Tom Kench on this team. You can't overcommit to kills. Everyone has made this mistake on the world stage, but we've had three patches to adapt. You see the explosive cast come out, and they just close this one out with confidence as LGD don't have anything left. Haunter's ult and Koldemik did an insane amount of damage in that team fight. Really lack of respect. And we saw the Buster Shot come in from Imp, but it was after the flash of Bjergsen's. Mm -hmm. We kind of got knocked further away. And so nice flash from Bjergsen, and that's a that's a very, very good sign for TSM. That team fight, they really maximized their gains out of that, too. You just got to wonder if they just didn't respect the fact that he just completed the Hydra. He just came down from the top lane. He just cleared out the waves. Maybe just caught them off guard with that amount of damage, because Imp just got destroyed where he stood. So, TSM, 3-0 to zero up in kills, and after a little bit of a misplay down the bottom lane, they managed to get themselves very much back in this game. And take four turrets to one. There's still a dragon down, but I don't think that's going to be too much of a worry for them right now. That's going to be up in just over two minutes' time, and now the invade on the jungle starts to happen. Starting to get control, starting to push that ward coverage. And TSM put an LGD on the back foot. And TSM can really just play the slow and steady. Once again, scaling is in their favor. So for them to have an advantage at this stage of the game is absolutely insane. Really making full use of one of their few early game champions, the mid game champions in that Renekton. Hanser, probably at the strongest he's going to be over the course of the game. Max level and the two major damage skills in his kit. And I mean, Titanic Hydra almost has the Black Cleaver. This guy is looking like a monster. Yeah, and that's one of the main ways for LGD to win this game is through that split push. But look at this coming up, the lack of wave there, nobody there. TSM just smooth smoothly moving into the bottom lane, taking yet another tier two. And Haunts are even covering off the top tower at the same time. Flame can't get near that one. Let's see where they're going to go with this. Gassing, hello, where's he off to? He's going to try and pile in. No, it's just going to be the mid lane. And Flame just instead teleporting back to safety. Doesn't want a duel with Haunts out, and more importantly, has zero vision in that top half of the jungle now. Overall, this is really not looking like an amazing game one performance from LGD. They're usually much more confident in diving and finding these early advantages and snowballing the game. And we've seen historically that they've been able to come back through excellent wave manipulation. But when you're against, once again, a Renekton that is this strong and a Nivea that is this strong, Jinx, you have so much wave clear on this TSM lineup, it's going to be very difficult for them to find any advantage via that strategy. Well, also, what does a late game team fight look like for LGD? They have virtually no AOE damage. It's a lot of single target damage, and Tom Kench is going to nullify that. So their kind of hope here was through those dives and through the split pushing, that hope has pretty much dwindled at this point with a 4K deficit. And TSM has all of the zone control around the Baron if they would decide to go for it. They can fight the next dragon extremely easily coming up in just 12 seconds. Yeah, and that Black Cleaver now completed for Haunter as well. Yeah, 12 seconds. It will be up any minute now. There it is. 
So, looks like TSM, they're getting into position. You can see Haunts is off the side, but he has teleported up. Everybody has teleport available to them. Uh, Telenai, Flames is not quite up yet. So he's going to have to either pressure that top tower, but it looks like Haunts is going to continue to cut him off. And Payne Evil is trying to get his split push going, but still, LGD, they're forced on the back foot every step of the way. They're trying to just create plays, maybe try and get a bit of a dive on towards his top TBQs taking the Gromp down, but this will be a very aggressive play if they can force it. Yeah, they basically just have to give up the Dragon here. There's no way they can feasibly fight this. They need to get some amount of gold back, but they're not even really going to threaten any kind of play onto Hanser in spite of the fact that Doublelift and Kissing are on that bottom side of the map. And that's just going to be TPQ simply recalling after taking. So they, they really didn't trade anything at all for giving up the Drag. And the big issue is they fall further and further behind. We talk about them not having the tools necessary to win a team fight, and historically, this means teams will default to picks to find an advantage, but you're playing against a Tom Kench. There's going to be almost no opportunities to take out a major player. Bjergsen has the Rebirth, Double Lift has the Tom Kench, and, and either way, you're not going to find the pick you want or the fight on your terms if you keep playing like they're playing now. Yeah, and TSM, I think, almost certainly have this game locked up. It's, it's pretty early, but... If things don't go a specific way with the, these kind of compositions, it really rarely works out. And I mean, this is a single team fight and a few different moments in wave pressure where TSM have really come out on top, but those small advantages paired with the scaling composition like this really do, really should just seal the deal in this game. Should be all they need to close out. It will be slow, it'll be steady, but they have all of the power in their hands. Well, when you draft like LGD did, you take risks. It's a, it's a high risk, high reward composition. It can look amazing if you get rolling and unstoppable with that split push. Here we go, there's a TP. Okay, they're gonna try and go for it, but well, TBQ he might be dead before he even gets in there. The rocket not quite catching on. He's gonna get out himself, but now Flames in trouble. Flames are off the side here. PYL is getting focused on. Not the best focus, but when there's the only thing available, and they can just keep on sieging down this turret. LGD can't do anything about it. This will be the top turret going to DSM. One of the big things that we've seen over the course of this patch as we watch this turret fall is champions who are good at pressuring under towers, and Anivia fits right into that belt. She's got the wall, she's got the storm, and we may have another fight on her hands. As I think Payne Evil fancies it. He's going to go in. The Zonia's ult bait works beautifully. M gets himself the kill on towards Haunter, but how will this work out? Bjergs is going to get locked up. He gets himself one, but just about gets out alive. Imp is on a mission, a rampage, but he gets turned around by Bjergs, and, and he should get out safe. TPQ might Ooh. be able to track him down here, but this is risky, Risky play, the mid laner, not a lot of mana, so instead he will get caught up. There's the knock up, he's in trouble. Flame should dive on this one, but he's going to get the flash out. He will not survive! Oh, the the stun on LGD, not quite enough on TBQ. Flame will should be able to catch him down. One more hit, there's the egg. And that will be the ace for LGD. That's a turnaround TSM were not expecting. And the only way that TSM can lose this game is by overextending and getting over aggressive. They have the tools necessary to engage in so many circumstances, but the wall from Bjergsen came out so early. And Monty, take this one. I mean, it's absolute insanity here. I mean, Double It also way too far forward right there. They were disrespecting the fact that the Zonias could come back in. And Imp, you have to be mindful of him because he, like Jinx, has these resets. So coming in on the backside, Svenskrin. Kasing is also out of position. He's not near anybody to kind of eat them right now and save them. He was all the way on the other side from his carries so really Kasing and double if they have to stay together like that because if Kasing had been there that would have been a very different fight I mean good on Bjergsen to pick up that kill on the back half to to end Imp's little team fight of glory but but at the end of the day I mean hemorrhaging uh, fights like that losing fights like that is, is not where you want to be on the side of TSM scaling still in their favor but Cassidy also going to be a monster earlier in the game uh, you know, pick potential may have looked like an issue, but he's going to outscale this Renekton. He's going to outscale, uh, you know, a lot of these champions. He will be able to find picks eventually if they keep feeding him gold like that. Yeah, I mean, it, the, the biggest thing for TSM is that the fact they didn't, they only lost the top turret. They didn't lose too many objectives from it. They actually got that top inner turret as well from it, but it could have been a lot worse. They could have potentially lost the Baron there. Yeah, it's still early in the game, so it would have been difficult for, for LGD to take that objective, but absolutely, that's a major consideration, and that is what could swing this game. But Kasing, you have to understand how these compositions work. Uh, and he must be next to double lift at all times. That was the big error. There's a TP coming down. The flank is coming around. TPQ's in position, but doesn't fancy it. A little bit too risky for him. But that teleport, that's going to force the mid laner, Pain Evil or God V, whichever you prefer to call him, away from his split push. But I think he may have done enough damage down that bottom lane. There's a big wave putting damage down there. So he kind of stopped that bottom turret going down. But for how long? 
There were a lot of questions about Hanser coming into this new lineup. And I have to say, in this game, Hanser is, his map awareness has been extremely good. Uh, in that particular engagement, he was off on the side, protecting his team flanks. He knew what the risk was coming in, and that they weren't going to be engaged on straight on. So uh, we saw him knowing when to put pressure on the turrets in the earlier game, uh, where to be with his TPs, and he's actually looked like a very strong player in this particular game. And people talked about this guy as, as Dyrus 2.0, the replacement for Dyrus, and he's looking even better, even more confident in terms of the impact that he's had in these team fights. As you said, the positioning has been excellent, and I'm, I'm wondering how this is going to transition as he takes a more defensive role in the late game. But the other player that I want to point out here is Kasing. He was so aggressive early on, and it was huge for giving TSM those early lane advantages. But as you pointed out in the last fight, he's just been struggling to transition as they've moved forward. Now he has to back off. It's not about the early aggressive Tom Kench damage. It's about keeping double lift safe. And while double lift knows that, that's never been a strategy that Kasing's played with. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the moment, LGD, they're doing exactly what they need to, buying themselves some time to recover from that big loss they had earlier on, that aces were wonders for them, and they're starting to stack out those items. Lich Pain now completed by Pain Evil. Static Shiv also was picked up by uh, M, but he's still a little bit behind. You can see the last Whisper was completed by Doublelift, so they're still going to be very confident coming into team fights. TSM. It's all about positioning for LGD, and as was pointed out, they have been caught out of position a couple of times already, so right now, the just trying to bait out the coverage, really, for this Baron. You can see TSM very much have the advantage. Doublelift actually up at the forefront here, trying to get those rockets down, and putting a lot of damage down on him, but that's forcing him away. Has to back off here. The siege potential, once again, from this team is huge. As long as they don't overstep or allow themselves to get flanked, it'll be very easy for them to just slowly grind this turret down. You yeah. can see those rockets just catching, chipping away at this turret, trying to catch on towards there. The wall not really separating someone. Pain Evil caught by a chomper there. Flame looking to get up the flank, but TSM very much aware of this position and making sure it doesn't happen. And more importantly, getting rid of those tunnels, making sure the flank is not possible. Double flank, TBQ and flame could actually be pretty deadly. Yeah, TSM is actually not warding very well, though. They, they should have more wards on their flanks right now, just to make sure they're lucky. Their one ward on the flank is the brush that flame is standing in, but that's about to time out. See, the sweeper's starting to come down right now. They are beginning to get a little nervous. Finally, that ward goes down in the brush. But uh, they need to have better setup for these sieges. That way they can sustain them in duration a bit longer. I think the setup was okay. The timing overall was a little bit off because you can see that bot wave is pushing in their favor. They just didn't sync it up at the right time. They didn't drive those waves in together to force attention onto the bottom side of the map. They will, however, take this dragon, and that's a good objective to have. But I feel like, as you said, they could have had so much more if they had prep, uh, prepped properly. Well, second dragon of the game for TSM. It's going to give them that chunk of gold, that buff, of course, and more importantly, stop LGD getting it, which is not really a possibility at the moment. Flame trying to get that split push going, has got his teleport available. Obviously, we saw Pain Evil's using his earlier on, so they're continuing to keep the pressure down. They're doing a good job at keeping TSM honest. They haven't really taken full control of this game, despite the early advantages. Yeah, this is, uh, this is getting a little bit more dangerous. Flame is slowly clawing his way back into this game, and there's a TP straight onto the mid lane. So they realized that they had lost control. Oh, boy! Whoa, that's a lot of damage. Finally, Kasing manages to pick him up, but Imp is starting to get a little anxious here. Starting to put the damage down. He's even going to rocket jump into his fence, going to have to barrel him away and double lift. Well, he's too low to really get involved in this engagement. Needs to get that life steal up, and like you say, they should try the Baron, but that life steal will be coming in there. Pain Evil getting on towards Haunter, but not really doing a great deal. They have a great bit of vision control now. Teleport available for Flame, who's just clearing out the bottom lane. Uh, yeah, they really should pressure Baron right now. Bjergsen actually had to TP in right there because the, they had denied most of the vision around the Baron. And so they needed to get some presence back on that objective immediately just to make sure that it wasn't uh, sort of stolen from under their noses or they couldn't fast push that tower. And Double of getting caught out and dealing a lot of damage is now meaning that LGD, or getting dealt a lot of damage, means that LGD has an angle on this turret. And using that superior range just to go in and take down that tower with confidence. And once again, starting to recoup these losses. Scaling may not be in their favor, but if they keep exposing little weaknesses on TSM, see a little exchange on the bottom side, they may be able to find a Baron, and that will more than make up for their lack of late-game scaling. Pushing and here we go. Baron going to be the call here from LGD. 
Oh, this is risky, risky play because TSM are very close, but that Baron is going down fast. They're going to lock them in there, but an Inivia can catch them in the pit so hard. Sven Skeren getting in a little too early. He's going to get caught out, but he's managed to escape in there. Hornster tries to get in. He dives on. Imp is putting the damage down at the back and untouched right now. Hornster on the root loop, loop around. The loop around. I can't even get my words out. He's managed to get away. Hornster's going to dive on towards him. Bjergsen catching on towards PYL. Straight away, Hornster's going to jump on towards him. Pain evil caught out. He'll get caught out. Double lift gets exciting. Can he catch on towards him? No, the sidestep, but it's enough. Income time can double lift get on there. Chase him down, man. It doesn't matter. He's got away, but it's a four for two exchange in the end, and TSM come out on top. Yeah, greedy play there from LGD, but TSM, I think, could have gotten even more out of that exchange. They uh, tried to get in the pitch just a little bit too quickly there, and that ended up catching Svensker in his life. Hanser also over-pursuing on the backside, but a nice win from TSM. They deny the Baron, and they do actually come out with an even bigger lead. Itemization continuing to scale up for them as well. The Seraphs Embrace finished, the Void Staff coming out, the Last Whisper. And as we look at this team fight, you can see, once again, Sven Skarin a little bit early. Does cost him a lot, but Kasing, not defensive in this fight, but doing such a good job of zoning so many people. As Double Lift just rips through the team, flashes back, making sure he can keep his back line safe. And LGD are just caught out and out of position as they're forced to just run for their lives. Hanser, once again, overstays his welcome, but small mistakes like that aren't going to matter as they find a greater win here. Yeah, and I, I can almost understand why Hanser did that. Imp has not gotten the last Whisper yet. He's actually opted for the Bloodthirster after Shiv, and we do see a lot of armor stacking up, with especially the Frozen Heart now on to Svenskarin. So they really, really have to start getting some... That armor penetration is absolutely clutch right now because Imp needs that at this point in time. Started to see a little hookup as well, because Singh managed to consume Imp and actually spat him straight towards the rocket that was coming out for Doublelift. So they're starting to get a little coordination going that too. Obviously, that's one of the duo lanes that they can practice a lot in solo queue. But as it is, TSM still pushing the pressure on towards LGD. But you've got to remember, that was LGD that started out the Baron. They were the ones that were trying to, trying to literally pick that fight. And it almost worked for them. It was close. Imp was off the side. It was only the, simply the pressure that got put onto him. If it had been allowed with his free time like he was in the top lane, I think that could have easily gone LGD's way. They have to be so cautious here, TSM. Yeah, at, at least they got vision back over the Baron. That has been a problem with, for them for the last yeah. few minutes, but the split push beginning, and now Pain Evil. He has a Lich Bane. He's going to be able to push those turrets down really quickly. And definitely a good showing from LGD to, to adopt that. They don't want a team fight anymore. They cannot risk getting flanked and losing a Baron if they lose another fight. So going back to the split push, going back to wave control, uh, one of their huge strengths overall as a team. And on the, in the meantime, TSM losing an objective here and there, but overall just dominating these team fights, and it's keeping them well ahead. Well, LGD just inching their way back in terms of gold as well. They were down 4 or 5k. They've cut that to about 2.5 right now. So it's they've been able to pick up a, you know, a little bit more farm here and there and start to close that gap. And now it's up to TSM just to make sure that they can keep the waves pushed out because they need eyes on this Baron at all times. Keep on shoving those lanes. TBQ doing a great job of just constantly keep poking at the Baron, making sure he goes aggressive at anyone that goes in towards that pit, giving them almost the, that free ward coverage that they required. But Dragon's going to be up in 30 seconds. I wonder if anyone's going to even contest this one because at the moment, it's actually LGD that have a great coverage around that area. TSM's number one goal has to be to get some of these wards into their own jungle right mm. now. Bjergsen actually just pushed out just a little bit and then immediately recalled because he was afraid of a Kassadin or this Fiora suddenly showing up in that lane. You can see the bottom side of TSM's jungle has a huge number of LGD's wards, so they're going to just try and split push this inhibitor as best they can. But TSM, they need to make sure that they are safe in these locations because otherwise this Kassadin is going to rip through their towers pretty damn fast. And both teams have 100% telegraphed their intent by where they're warding. TSM is all about making sure this Baron does not go down, all about sieging here in this mid lane, whereas Kassadin clearly focused on the bottom side of the map. Knows he cannot take another fight, but would be more than happy to snag an inhibitor tower. Catching a lot of damage on towards Pain Evil, though. Double if should be able to finish the tower off here. The first inhibit is going to get cracked open, and they're going to continue the pressure. Those rockets doing a hell of a lot of damage from Double Lift here. They still have to be cautious. They don't get flanked around, but they're not going to get the inhibitor just yet. PYL, though, taking low. He's going to have to pop his ulti. And He's going to have to force away from that one. That's going to be the inhibitor. Nicely sieged out by TSM. I have no idea why LGD recalled right there. Pain Evil coming back to his own base. He doesn't really offer any wave clear because his E is such short range that he has to get in range of the rockets coming in 
from double lift or they're risking getting stunned perhaps by Bjergsen or getting into the zone of the Anivia ult. So he should have just been trying to trade on that bottom side. This is risky. Look at the mid lane. Flame and Impa push right out trying to force something. But TSM, they're just piling straight on towards the end. The second inhibitor turret. And LGG totally out of position there, didn't read the big wave. They were trying to force some aggression, trying to force something TSM to react. Now they're going to try and pile in there. They're trying to get the damage down. They get the flank around. Flame's going to be a focus. So Inscara's going to get caught out here. But they're going to try and lock on towards TBQ. Flame getting the damage down. But Bjergsen is going to get himself one. Can he get a second? Pain Evil manages to jump onto Double Lift. Double Lift down. Bjergsen gets focused. Imp is going to get himself the reset on Kasing. He will leap forward. Can he get on towards Inscara? And it doesn't look like it. Bjergsen and will get picked off and just like we saw with the pressure in the top lane TSM caught out by a positioning error once again yeah. is he gonna get a kill from this he is <laughs> but he will pay the price in the end but LGD not done yet and this is risky they could go Baron here yes they absolutely could uh, especially because TBQ has his ultimate up he'll be back in 10 seconds so he can perhaps get over to that side of the map nope no tunnels just kidding a lot of damage on the Baron, but there's no jungler in sight. Svensk Karen's on the outside of the pit as well, so this is very risky for LGD, but they know oh this is boy. one of their last chances. Oh my god. Come on, Sven. Flame realized he's a bit a little bit low. He can still pull him in. Now they see him. Now they of realize course. he's there. Svenskaren has so much burst. Goes oh. in and gets the smite! Ten Skarin doing what he needs to with a oh. rocket, even caught on to Flame, and Haunts are now on him. I think he's got enough to try and turn this one around. Not quite enough. And TBQ comes in to save out, and Imp will get himself the kill, but that was so risky. And the Baron steal comes in for Sven Skarin. No eyes in that brush. Great steal by Sven Skarin. But you have to be so cautious against the Gragas. His combo, not only the smite, but his ultimate and the barrel roll as well. You can outburst almost anything in that situation. Great play by Sven Skarin. And at the end of the day, you get some consolation prizes here as, as TSM members drop. But Double Up gets one for himself. And the Baron buff, as we see the creeps already pushing in the mid lane, and happy to snag a kill, gets a little bit of gold back. But it's not going to help, it's not going to be enough to clear out Baron empowered super minions at this stage of the game. And TSM absolutely have this one if they can just force it down the mid lane. So Double Up's going to get the third dragon of the game as they start to march towards. Remember that top lane totally exposed. Tower went down early. The inhibitor wasn't picked up, but. That's just simply a case of rotating up there. Meanwhile, the bottom lane looks to be TSM's next focus. They can indeed empower those minions. Just a couple. I think it was Kasing and Doublelift left with the Baron buff. That should be able to keep the pressure down. What are LGD going to do? It's going to have to be some sort of rash tactic to try and get themselves out of this one. My big concern with LGD coming into this game was how they were going to perform, and we have yet to see them take an advantage that is not, or that is not, or that is proactive, rather. Everything they've gotten has been reactive, punishing TSM for overextending. Every time they try to find something on their own, whether it's uh, Bjergsen in the mid lane in the early, early game, or that Baron, they've fallen flat. They've overextended and they've made massive mistakes, and that's not something you can afford to do with this team composition, or with LGD in general, just how they play as a team. I think if you're LGD, you go back to the drawing board in the draft. Uh, even if they win this game, it hasn't been an impressive showing. Go for something with higher wave clear so you can take an advantage because they have shown that uh, they ha they've been good about kind of turtling on this map in spite of their rather lackluster team composition for it. And they've been clawing their way back into this one. Haunts it's like a lot of damage from Flame in the top lane. That's okay, a jewel that's down. happening up there. He's had to use his ulti to get away from this one. And this is a big deal because if Flame can punish him, both have teleport available, but he doesn't look like he's going to allow him away. That's going to default and hold this siege that TSM are trying with his Baron minions. Yeah, but they have to back off now. Like you said, D-Man, with both TPs available and Flame winning that duel, it could easily be a 4v5 in that particular situation, so they need to back off. Interesting positioning here from LGD. Consistently looking for the flank, really hoping to uh, expo expose this weakness from TSM once again. The two team fights that LGD have won have been on the top side of that map when they have found the flank successfully. Looking to repeat the same thing here on the bottom. Much more difficult this TP. time around. Oh, almost getting the tower. You do say the TP, so Flame having to respect it, making sure they can keep hold of this last turret, but I don't think it's going to be possible. Double lift has the range, and there's the tower going down now. LGD, this is going to be a last-ditch attempt at a fight. They have to get their positioning exactly right. They have to get him laying the damage down. Double lift is a juicy target. He keeps putting himself out there, but he keeps punishing PYL for getting close. You can see the dive in. There's PYL. Did he get enough down? It doesn't look like it. TBQ is going to get locked up. Forced into double lift, and double lift will happily oblige. Take himself a kill.
And now LGD down to four members of defense. And that's exactly what they were missing in the last siege was Kasing being there to save double lift immediately. Puel gonna miss the pull. Oh, now he's gonna have to use his ulti. Haunts have been taken pretty low here. Flames just dangling around the side. He wants to get in there. Haunts is a juicy target for him. Double lift would be very squishy as well. But he needs to bite his time perfectly. The inhibitor does go down. It looks like TSM are happy with that. They're going to try and back away. LGD going to try and chase them out here. But I think they're ready for it. PYL, he's got no ulti available to him. He's going to be an easy target. Double gets himself one, gets himself two, tries to catch on towards them. Flame dodging out as much as he can. It will be a two for one exchange once again for TSM. Overall, just TSM finally learning when they need to back off, playing more cautious. Imp potentially in trouble here. Oh, him. Got to be careful he doesn't get chewed up and spit out here. The lockup comes in. It's Flame that's caught out, but him still putting a lot of damage down. Payne tries to work his damage, tries to jump in towards him. Zonia's not working out this time. Double lift will get locked up. Is that enough? They catch on towards Bjergs and they catch him down. And now it is LGD's turn to try and push. I have no idea what TSM was even trying to do there. There was a mid inhibitor that had just respawned. And instead of backing off or trying to move over, they put themselves in a huge amount of danger and then they expended a lot of flashes to try and kill imp and ended up doing hardly anything at all to him and they extended took a huge risk and got punished for it once again tsm really has been poor when it comes to knowing when to move in in this game and great tp there by pain evil absolutely fantastic as we look this fight and, and imp just dishing out damage double up does find the solo kill but he has to flash forward to get it to escape flame in that exchange just letting it uh making it incredibly easy for tbq to close out and bjergsen getting dropped in this as well it's just huge mistakes on the side of TSM. And Bjergsen flashed forward towards the downed inhib to try and wall off Imp. I mean, you're just, against a Tristana, you're just, not, just gonna gonna jump over there. not gonna find much there. And the rest of the team was there to back him up well. I mean, every time TSM takes an advantage here, they overcommit. And instead of playing a, a very calculated game, they take these unnecessary risks and they get punished. And they're letting LGD stay in this game. Definitely, and as we move forward too, we've seen Flame already at the point in the game where he can duel out Honsterus. He's just outscaling. Pain Evil starting to be a real threat to the back line, and thus Kasing has that Devour up and available. So as they push forward, it's going to be incredibly difficult. Flame now even has the Guardian Angel. Going to be so easy for him to duel, so easy for him to show up and flank in these team fights without being punished if his team's a little bit late on the response. And look at the timers. A minute to Baron. If TSM would have just took that objective, back to ways, stayed happy with what they got, reset themselves, come back out, they would have full control of the map right now, as it is. It's now actually given LGD a very good chance at having a grasp at this Baron, because a minute is a quick time in this League of Legends, and you can see they have the ward control there. Fortunately for TSM, they have both TPs up right now, so yeah. they can maintain the vision control with some ease, but they have to start sweeping that out and trying to get full control over the Baron pit, because right now LGD has a, just a bevy of wards sitting right outside that entrance. And you can see TSM really just waiting for LGD to come to them. They cannot afford to be the aggressive engagers here. They don't have the tools necessary to really force this one out. But they're posturing very oddly. Mm. Moving into that corridor is very risky. So PYL has flash engage here. So he's looking to get that flank around. No flash for TBQ, though. So he's got to delicately do this one. It's, it's such a delicate process that the LGD sets up to try and get something from this one. But Double lift is still a very juicy target, and as has been proven so far, he's been caught out a couple of times. Imp is very much ready and waiting to pounce on this one, and when they get a big bit of damage, but that's a Nexus turret going down to Super Minions, and that is the advantage of a tower going down, the inhib being down, but look at Pain Evil, look at the damage, that was two rockets from yeah. Double Lift. No TP either, so it's gonna be hard for them to contest this, but the wards are all I, still there. There's they, the ult coming in from Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai's just left that. That is super minions all over the Nexus turrets. What is he doing? It, the risk of Baron was so big there, they've just had to pull away. Super minions are taking this Nexus turret down. Both turrets are gonna drop there. What is going on here? LGD just out of position. They had to leave someone back there, but that was misplay. They were risk about this Baron. Now the Baron is being picked up, but they just don't have any control now. Imp is backing away. That's going to be TSM with the Baron now in full control. Imp was taking wolves right there during that. Of course, they had to send Pain Evil back, which meant that TSM knew that the TP was down, and so they could safely go for that Baron. But, I mean, they 
LGD just straight up rolled over at that Baron. No actual contest right there, and TBQ ulting way too early. And TSM is the young lineup. We, we made jokes about Doublelift being the one who's going to randomly be taking jungle camps as the rest of the team tried to make things happen. But it's LGD who are falling back into that role, who are looking split. The communication just is not there as a team, as little mistakes left and right are costing them. And a little mistake of losing a Nexus Tower then costs them the Baron, and now potentially the game as well here. The one thing very delicate for TSM is every time they keep trying the siege push, they're not warding the sides, which the flank is constantly trying to come out. This time they realize that Flame is trying to do the same thing. TSM just needs to go into the bottom lane with the super minions right now and try and win this game. Why are they going after inhibitors when there is an open nexus right here and they could be buffing up the minion wave that actually has the supers in it? Oh, that's going to be him caught out. The rockets from double lift. Inhibits is going to get forced. This is possibly the last fight. PYL taking a lot of damage. Pain Evil gets a good bounce back on towards him. Horta goes down. Sven Skerin caught out. He's going to get lots of... Oh, him didn't quite get the damage down. The shield was just about enough. TBQ backs away, but the damage may well have been done. PYL, oh, he survives, but the skin is deep. No! Flame took the rocket and it hit PYL with the splash damage, and now Flame's Guardian Angel is in trouble. LGD gets shrunk down. He gets back to the fountain. The return comes back from Pain Evil, but this will be the inhibitor going down. I think TSM have to realize they go back away from this one. They've lost Haunter. He's got TP, but it's a 40-second death timer. Have to be careful, of course, as Flame re-engages. Oh, Double have gone out of position. Now they caught on him. If gets the kill, Bjergsen egg down, and LGD just massacre TSM in their face. What is going on in this game? It is carnage, ladies and gentlemen. 20 kills now for LGD, and they save the inhib. Kasing again, not next to double lift right there, and LGD realizes this and just piles onto the Jinx. There have been a lot of positional teamfight errors from TSM in this game, and it keeps on costing them, and they haven't been able to actually take down the Nexus yet. Going for these inhibitors, it's a safe way to play out the game, but sometimes you just have to go hard for the win. And it, it's not what's come through at all. They found the kill on PYL. Flame gifted them a kill. He moved in here on the backside. But of course, double up overextends here. Fiora comes in with the grand challenge on the backside. We'll get the healing. We'll get the kill as they close this one out. And Kasing caught over the wall, left unattended. Isn't near Bjergsen either. So they use this Tom Kench. Does a little bit of damage to him, but it's just absolutely not worth anything as once again TSM throw away an advantage. I've been really unimpressed with their use of Tom Kench in this game. This is not how you play this very powerful and This champion. was a first pick, remember, as well. Yeah. It's a, a big deal. Well, as it is, TSM still yet to close out this game. Every tower in the game down for TSM. They managed to catch everything, but they just can't seem to finish. And LGD still hanging. And this is getting dangerous because if they get caught again, these are 40, 50 second death timers now. These are dangerous times. LGD legitimately, if they catch them again, could just run straight down the middle and finish it. Oh, absolutely. They've got the damage. They have a Tristana and a Lich Bane Cassidy. And those towers are just going to melt. So this one's still just hanging out a Knife's Age. Neither team has anywhere close to the fifth Dragon stack either. So we're still kind of sitting here waiting around for that. But a lot of this game and TSM's inability to close has been based around their warding. LGD continues to find flanks that they shouldn't be able to get if warding had been done more thoroughly by TSM. And LGD has also consistently had good wards to split push in the bottom side, which allows them to keep some level of control over the map. And they've, they've had a lot of wards around the Baron too. I'm trying to cast my mind back to a stat from season, it was season four when Sven was on SK. Oh, I yeah. seem to recall a stat where he barely warded at all. And Kevin was just like, wait, we showed him the year statistics. I think he warded yes. like, 10 to 15 times across the entire year. Did. This may be an issue. <laughs> yes, uh, I think you you may be onto something there, that's for sure. And uh, that has been a, a fault of Svenskern as a player. The upside to Svenskern is that he does play very aggressively, yeah. and he is very mechanically good in the early game. Well, we'll see how it pays off TSM once again on the aggression, but they've got to be careful. PYL gets in, but Doublelift quickly pulls away. There's the teleport from the sign, but it was quickly answered by a barrel and flame. Teleport is now down. Pain Evil still has his TP up, but it's just simply keeping the back, getting the poke down. It needs to try and keep getting the damage, but it looks like Doublelift will get himself the inhibitor. Still not quite able to complete it. Haunts us just trying to keep them at bay. Very risky stuff here. Pain Evil and Flame trying to get that flank on, but TSM working them down. Good rockets coming in. PYL tries to single out Haunts, but it's not going to work out. Pain Evil dives in. He's caught out. He's down. Doublelift gets himself the kill, and now he can push on through. On towards the tower. There's the rocket. There's the finish they needed. It's going to be in caught out by Bjergsen, and this will 
be game for TSM. And Monty, you said that they had to go hard to finish it, and that's what we saw. Finally, flashes forward, aggression, proper use of the Tom Kench, and amazing stacking of the CC to take down that Cassidy and a confident win from TSM <laughs> in game one. I'm not sure confidence, confidence is confident for the last 30 seconds. 30 right. seconds of confidence there it was all it took. And 50 <laughs> minutes of indecision. <laughs> it's a yeah. good start for TSM for sure. Both of these teams, bit of a sloppy League of Legends game there for sure, but TSM comes out with the win. Now, I mean, just the vision control, that's going to be the question for LGD. They need to be able to take advantage of it better. TSM, they've got to get more wards down on the map in order to close more effectively. And for LGD, maybe they think about running a different style of composition where they're not so dependent on split pushing and picks in the next game. Definitely something to consider. Of course, they have a 